Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and I couldn't get my video recorder going quick enough, but uh, I want to demonstrate this failed second entry short. Notice we had a new low, a first entry short, then a second entry short. It broke lower and then went higher, so I had my stop one tick above this bar. It filled it, and it's moving higher now. <clears throat> So that was a failed, this is a short trap, it's a failed second entry short. Um, so my hope is that we move on up and feel this. Um, feel the uh, scout portion and then we'll see how we manage the rest of it from there. Uh, a lot of times I'll just scalp out on these traps because it, it may only run high enough to get the scalp and then it may turn lower again. Uh, we've got this huge overnight gap here that we're probably going to try to fill, but really what I'm thinking could happen, this is this is one of the scenarios, there's the first leg up, and so that would put our target right in here, so that's where I'm going to start. And then you also may look at this like this is your first leg up. And then from here, and you see we've almost filled that, but that's it could be two legs right there. So, but really what I'm looking at is hopefully maybe another leg like this right here. So we'll see what happens. Um, this was my signal bar, so I'm gonna move my stop up two ticks below that. I was right inside my two point max right there at that dot little matching lows there. This is the overnight low. I put this on here to help people see this. Um, this is the highs of the day, and this is the lows of the day. And this does include the overnight session. I like to trade the over, I mean, um, I don't trade the overnight session, but I keep all that data on my chart. So, so we'll see what happens here. But, um, you know, I'm looking for the scalp portion and then, um, hopefully we can get a little more if we make another leg like this one. You see there's two legs down right here. There's actually two legs in that first leg, then a correction, then another leg down, a little double bottom, a higher low, a failed second entry short. Lots of reasons to like that long right there. It's getting really close to this high. Uh, you see I do have room to get, no, Don't I'm, I'm just maybe one tick shy, but it's a short trap, so I like it regardless. And uh, this is one of those where I still considered using a limit order uh, but when it usually when it breaks lower out the low side and you get a trap like that and goes out the high side it usually moves on pretty quick but it doesn't surprise me that we're getting resistance right in here so uh, we'll let it play out and we'll see what happens I may pause it just so the video doesn't get too long again um, but I've been wanting to demonstrate one of these traps because I get so many questions about them uh, and I actually one set up this morning pretty nice after a pretty good trading morning so thought I'd take this time to show you that and it could turn out that I'm trapped to the upside but generally these traps do not fail um, so we'll see what happens but you can see that we had a new low there's a first entry pull back and second entry and I'm sure there's probably a bunch of that probably went short right there and so um, you know you may be on the wrong side of this at least for now you may turn out to be on the right side but I wouldn't have risked this any higher than right there when that failed second entry triggered so um, you got a little double top there so this could act like a breakout pullback long as well so you may get another opportunity to get on if it breaks lower and turns higher but you're not going to probably get as good an entry um, unless it comes a good bit lower and makes another bar that's lower here. Um, so we'll let it play out here and then but again we've been really working down since we had this big gap open and uh, we've been working down We still have this gap, but I like them to try to run this higher again. At least come back and test this breakout area right here. We had these matching lows. I don't have a line on there, but let me put it on there to help you see it. I'm going to 
call it that right there. And so there's a good chance we should come back and at least test that. Um, it's very rarely that you break lower out of a, a double bottom like that and don't come back and test it. And so two legs up would definitely give us that test right in there. Let's make this a little bigger just so it's easier to see for everybody. But I'm going to pause this a minute and um, I'll start it back when something's changing. Okay, as you can see we're starting to move. We're trying to move higher again. Okay, I'm back. I had a little business call there. I got distracted. I was afraid I wasn't going to get back in time. This thing is struggling to go higher, but it's still working higher. We got a nice, uh, this looks like a nice little breakout pull back with a nice bullish bar. So hopefully we can break and go higher here and go ahead and get our scout portion. It's moving really slow, but this has just been the way this market's been a lot lately. So you just have to be patient. I mean, even this nice little move up here, it was real slow and methodical. So you just have to be patient and, you know, if you, you don't want to get your top stop too tight, um, you know, you don't want to give it too much room either, but uh, you don't want to, you know, one thing I hear is people will say they start tightening their stop and this thing will tick back just enough. I mean, this market, especially the ES, it's very, very efficient. I can't say that enough times. This market is very efficient. They don't give you any freebies. So in other words, you know, if you t they know where people, they know where we can put their stops, and they knew they know their stops sitting right here now from the people that probably tightened, and and they'll gun for them and take them out and then turn and go right where you thought it was going to go. So you got to be really careful. Don't tighten your stops too quickly. Uh, you know, you can't give a trade too much room, but at the same time, you can't get your stop in the wrong place. Um, and just get stopped out by, you know, stop runs and noise in the market. So um, when I say this market's very efficient, they know where the stops are. They can see your stops. Um, they see them. If you open an order right there, they can see those stops. And, you know, and if there are enough of them pile up there um, without affecting the market in the opposite direction, they'll run down there and take them out. And, um uh, so just be aware of that. So don't get your stops too close. But at the same time, don't, you know, don't give it too much room either. So it's it's a thin line. You know, our rule is we don't give it more than two points from our entry. And you can see where I've got it there. Gets me right inside. Uh, I'm I'm inside the two point mark right now where I've got my stop and I basically got it two ticks below my signal bar which was this bar right here and I could scratch this trade now since it's not really moving on up like I expected but like I said, it's you see how slow and long it took that one to move up, and they actually had to bring it back, and that's what they did. They came back and they ran all these stops of these people, and then they took it right where they, you know, right where you would expect it to go. And it makes a new high above this, and it makes it a little correction, and it's working on another leg. Hopefully, we'll get a leg equal to that one right there, and I can get my, you know, I can get a few points off my runners here. But at this point, we're just still working on our scalp. <clears throat> Notice that bar closed. Just little tiny doji close on it slow so it's not a still kind of 
more like a little breakout pullback bar. I still like holding on this for now. You can see that those highs along right there. There's another. Um, notice we had this little trend channel here, and so I'm looking for a retest of this high as well. So that's another reason. And, that's going to take out my exit order there. Um, then we got this little channel working up here as well. It usually helps to draw these short term trend lines and channels just as well as it does the longer term ones. And you can see this one, we had this little, it might have even been steeper than that. It's probably more like that right there. We got the break, a couple of legs down to a new low, and then now we're kind of going the other way. So make sure you use these. Um, you got to get them right, though. You know, generally, if you got them right, they're going to contain prices really well and you can see that here see how I'm using the upper side to adjust it a little bit and you can see how that's holding prices really neatly then you get the break and now we're trying to make a retest and then you got this one and even coming down same deal draw these lines you can see that we had the break new low and now we reverse going the other way and now we got this little channel working up so draw these channels draw your lines and you got to get them right you know what I'll do is I'll see people and it's not to say that it's wrong but they'll draw it right here and then they'll wonder why they didn't get a retest but it, you know is this right maybe there is a bigger one here we'll have to see uh, you see we got field right there we still haven't ticked through there though <clears throat> I just decided to take off there while I was filling out here and had you distracted probably. There we go and you saw my stop move to break even now. And you see that just doesn't really hold prices very well might have a channel you might could say there's a channel right there but what about all this up here and it just doesn't hold prices very well so but you know you just keep drawing your lines and playing with them till you figure it out make that break even plus one because this channel is really tight here and so unless we're going to get another tear off of this thing um, we could back up here. It's a really tight channel. But these are just little short term channels. They're not. And we could go ahead and exit our runner here. But what I'm doing, so I'm trying to get 
a measured leg like so. And you can see we're still moving higher here. So hopefully you saw why I like that, the failed second entry short. And even if you didn't like it counting off of this low, you still got a second chance at it for, you know, you can count these. I get this question a lot too. You can really count this double bottom either way. You can either count this as the new low or this one. I'll count it both ways. Uh, generally I'll use this one so it's the first entry, then the second entry, and it failed and it's gone higher. But assuming you use this one, um, we still got a few more ticks left to go here. If uh, if you count it off this low first entry, then a second entry. So we'll see what happens. We're getting really close to this level right here, and that's where it could easily turn back down. So I tell you what I'm going to do, just so this trade doesn't go forever. I'm going to put my exit order right there, and if we tick through that, we'll end up getting. Ninety-five, seventy-five. We'll end up getting a point and a half off our runner. Normally, I wouldn't probably do that. It's kind of choppy, though. Um, what you want to do is try to hold on this runner as long as you can. And there's different ways to do that. You could use your profits to give you a bigger stop. If the market's really trending, that's when I might be a little more aggressive with my runners. But generally. I'll try to get two to three points on my runners if it's choppy like this. I'll try to get out at the next. But you see how the top of the little range or uh, little channel is held right there. Now we're going back to the other side. So I may be just futile trying to hold on to this. I could just go ahead and close this and take what I, it gives me on my runner. probably should have had my limit exit order right there and it might have gotten filled since I was in there real early saw so I quickly the other one got filled but I was in the queue really early I had to wait a long time for it to come up there and fill that exit order Good buying right there. Come on, buyers, a couple more ticks and take us out of this runner, and then we'll wrap this trade up. <clears throat> I'll show you the other trades that I saw today that I liked while we're waiting on something to happen here. This was the first break of this trend line. It's a pretty bearish bar. It went out the top first and then came out the bottom, so I really liked it for a, you know, going short right there. If you didn't, you could have waited on this bar and maybe used a, when it broke lower here, tried to use a limit order to see if you could get filled. Um, but we made a new, I treated this like a new swing high and then a first entry then a second entry right at the EMA, so another short right there. This is a breakout pullback short. It's a little more aggressive in my opinion because now um, you've had your break, you've got a new low. This one, notice how these lows didn't go much further. So this one was a little more aggressive, but hey, um, you know, you can't hardly ignore it. So if you took it, good trade. Um, I didn't like any of these longs here really. Um, they're just not very good setups. Oops. We're about to get stopped out over here. It's kind of hard to see all this here. Uh, there was a little bit of a trap here, so you might have considered going long on this one. It is a failed second entry short, too. Um, your entry, you, this is one you probably would have wanted to use a uh, stop because your entry would have been 
69, uh, 95, 75, and you see it was uh, kind of a four tick failure there by using the stop. So you had to use a limit order there if you use that one. I didn't like this setup here. I thought it was a little bit, it's just notice all the overlap. It's hard to see right here. Oops. Let me get this. Anyway, let's go ahead and mark this one, the one I just took. And you could have considered entering again here. I think this one's a little more aggressive too, right here at this high and getting back close to the retest. But, um, you know, we're working up and we're in this channel. So and it's a nice reversal bar. It's a failed second entry short if you count there. We'll have to see what happens on that one. Change the colors on these. We'll make this one green because I just think it's a little. I think it's getting risky to enter there. You have to only barely going lower and barely going lower, and already having this break here that I saw. Um, definitely don't like entering anything long or short here. I didn't like going short here, but it was really risky long unless you used a limit order. So. Um, what I'll do is I'll just use a mark that one in green because it is a failed second entry short. Um, well, you know what? It's really not because we never broke lower here. Um, I was treating it like one. <laughs> Excuse me. I was treating it like one because this is like a a little correction here. But technically, on this chart, it's not a second entry short. Um, so that makes that even more aggressive there. Um, Obviously, there's you don't want to be going short out of this either. Uh, you might have thought about going long there, but again, not a very good setup. Um, it looks it looks more like a trading range kind of stuff here. Look at all the overlap. Nothing's going higher. Nothing's going lower. It really is kind of a trading range. Doesn't just look like one. It is. I would use that for your lows, and this is kind of your highs right across here. And it moved up a little bit is basically what it did. And you can see we kind of got a little breakout pullback long working here, um, which is where I took the trap at. And so that's, you know, it's two trading ranges. You don't want to be going short out of that, but you don't really want to be going long either. And then you had this little failed break lower, but again, I don't like going long there. It would have worked. So that's really all I've seen. Um, these were your really two good trades. And then of course this long that I showed you here that I took. And then this one, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it blue, I guess. We'll see if it works or not. Um, but you don't mark it based on whether it works or not. I'm marking it because this was really your failed second entry short here, even though this looks more like one, but this is kind of a breakout pullback long. And you can see that little trend line still holding. Um, they're trying to take it lower. They, you know, they probably see my stop sitting down there and some other people's stops are probably right below that as well. I don't have to tighten that there. I could leave that at break even, or I could even get it back below my signal bar and, and give up a tick to risk, but I don't want to risk, um, giving my money back for an extra tick or so there. So let's just see what happens here. Let's see if I can still get filled here on my order. If we make a measured move, we've got plenty of room back up into here. But I think more than anything, what they're trying to do is retest this breakout area across here. And another thing, we did have kind of a measured move down. I didn't even talk about that. Um, there's your first range portion of that little trading range. And then you see we came within a tick of that. So, and you know, it depends on how you measured that one. So we really had uh, 
this little trading range area and then we dropped down and we made about a measured move on that so but it's really important to learn how to find those measured moves and figure out how to find your targets and so forth because it makes a big difference tempted just to close this out and go ahead and take a couple of ticks on my runner here and move move on. I'm ready to call it a day. It's been a pretty good trading day. Done pretty much early today, so this was a nice trade right here. And your minimum target here, since we're talking about that, your minimum target here should have been right down in here and you can see that it, it found support right in there before it went lower so or you might have even used this one brought it over and you can see it was a perfect measured move there when it bounced so that's what most people were probably looking at generally when you get three legs like that these are close enough to be three equal legs down but generally if this leg is not equal to this one your third leg will be let's say this is your big move here and this one's shorter and this third leg will be equal to your first leg I don't want to get too confuse people too much there but just something to think about but you'll see that a lot you'll see a short move on this leg and then this leg will be real long and then you'll get a correction and you'll get one more leg again but generally if this big this middle leg is a lot larger than the first leg the third leg will be similar in length to this one let's just see I don't think that's the case here I think this leg is a little shorter than this first one you can see that but this is not really one leg here this is two legs down still alive on this trade they're trying to come back and get the stops this is almost close enough to be a retest here the worst we'll do is we'll make a tick on our runner here This bar is about to finish. We'll watch and see how this bar completes. We don't get stopped out first. And it ends as a doji again. Notice how it closed inside that little line. We couldn't close it outside it. <clears throat> See if we can't make another push up here.
Trying to go higher. Bounced off the order there once. Nothing filled up there though. buyers a couple more buying here this trade lasted way too long of course that's you know when you're when you're managing runners sometimes that's the way it is I mean you know the scalp lasted long enough but this is just a runner so this is all freebie here that's the way I look at this I, I don't consider the runners anything but freebies and that way you don't get too wrapped up in them you know, if they keep going higher, when they bec when they become a little more ma harder to manage and and deal with is when you get one that's really running and you got some nice profits built up. Then it can get a little tough because it becomes a you know you don't want to get you don't want to let a runner get you a lot of profits and then give it all back. So uh, most of you know my philosophy is I'd rather exit and look for another chance to enter rather than. Uh, letting it back up on me so um, that's the way I manage them generally alright we're out of this thing we're done we're filled and uh, I'm probably gonna regret exiting so quickly on it um, but that's the way it goes and uh, you can see it's finding resistance right there at the, um, I don't have this line quite straight there. Right at that double bottom, that was our target there in the end, and you can see we're kind of backing down from that now. So, but anyway, I just wanted to demonstrate one of those traps for you. That wasn't the best one I've ever done. I mean, generally, um, when you get them trapped here, those things take off really quick. Uh, this one didn't, but uh, needless to say, it still worked, and it did, it did what we thought it was going to do. I'm still thinking we might get a measured move here, which a lot of times they like to go back and take out stops from previous entries. And on this short right here, that's 1699. Let's just see where a measured leg gets us to. And you can see that gets you to right there about that same place, 1699. And you'll see that so many times, and that's where it'll go to, and then you'll get a uh, something different, or something will change. So, but this is about a 34-minute video. Um, I was done earlier today, and this is two days in a row that I've done a, a you know, that I've demonstrated a, a live trade, and. I don't do a lot of these, but people like to see them, and you know, and people like to hear my thought process as it's going. So it was a good chance to do one. Um, it's the first time I've seen a trap, you know, set up lately that I could demonstrate the trap for you. But again, let me show you that, and then I'm going to wrap it up and close this thing up. But we had a new low here, first entry short, second entry short. It failed, and this is what I really liked about this trade was that. It went lower first and then turned and went out the high side of that same bar on without this bar closing. If this bar would have closed right there, 
that would have made it a little more suspect but I just went in and put my stop order right there and it went right through it and then we got our scalp and then we uh, what did we get on our um, our entry was let's see what we got on our runner I don't even know what we made on our runner our entry was 95.75 on the runner and we exited at 97 and a quarter so we made a point and a half on our runner and we made two points on our scalp. So the total, we, we just scalped one point off of uh, each contract. So it was a two point scalp. So we made three and a half points there um, in about 35 minutes, 34 minutes. So, you know, that seems like a long time for to make, you know, a couple hundred dollars there. But uh, think about it. You know, where else can you make that kind of money in 30 minutes? Uh, nowhere that I know of. And, you know, and once you prove you can do it with two or three contracts, you can always in increase to five contracts, seven contracts, and eventually, you know, you can work up to maybe trading, you know, seven to ten contracts uh, or more. I mean, the people ask me that about the ES, you know, when do you have to worry about being too, having too much leverage? You could trade easily 100 contracts in the ES, and you're not going to get any slippage, really. Uh, it may take a little longer to get filled than it than it does, and you may not get limit orders filled on a touch very often. Which you you know, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, you're not going to get filled on limit order touches that often anyway. I got filled on two today, um, pretty easily though. It only had to bounce off them a few times, but notice that prices always end up quickly going on through. And that's generally what you'll see. It's very rare that you'll get filled on a limit order and that be the high tick or the low tick if you're going down and then prices reverse and go the other way. It's very rare that will happen. Generally, if you get filled, it's just a matter of a second or two or maybe, a you know, 30 seconds that it's going to continue to go higher. It just means the, you know, there wasn't a lot of volume there or worked through the majority of it and uh, you were just, you know, higher in the queue than some other people so or lower in the queue or whatever however you want to say that but uh, you can see we're trying to turn lower now after testing that breakout area which is doesn't surprise me at all we may still go higher here but um, this is looking I mean this is kind of looking like a range day uh, I still would not be you know I still want to figure we're gonna fill this gap um, it's very likely to happen so uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. I uh, hope you've had a good trading day. If you're still trading, uh, you know, it's gonna, it looks like it's going to be slow here. But this thing could pick up at any minute, so you never say never. You never know when it's going to quit. But I'm going to call it a day, and I'll be back to do it again tomorrow. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of how I trade these traps. And um, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com.